All right, so this is the second lecture for chapter 29, um, starting with Lenz's Law. So going back, like I said, this negative sign is one of the most important negative signs in all of physics. It has its own name, it's its own law. What is that all about? Um, here we go. The minus sign gives the direction of the induced EMF. Okay, so far so good. Tells us what direction current flows around the loop. How do we figure that out? The current produced by the induced EMF moves in a direction so that the magnetic field it produces tends to restore the change field. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, here's another version of it. The induced EMF is always in a direction that opposes the change in flux that caused it. You can even shorten that uh, even more to say the induced EMF is in a direction that opposes the change in flux. Okay, going back, that's what this is. The EMF opposes, opposite sign, change in flux, right? So how does that work out? Let's say you've got some coils of conducting wire just holding them in the magnetic field. If you were to squeeze or pull, right, pull the coils, that would induce a current, okay? Let's go to the bigger picture here. Uh, why? Well, there's flux in through these coils clearly when you're holding them in a magnetic field when you pull on the ends right it sort of pinches the the coils which of course reduces the surface area i mean the magnetic field isn't changing it's constant it's ex external but uh the magnetic the air surface area is reduced so the magnetic flux is decreased okay lenz's law says the induced EMF and therefore the current that is driven by the induced EMF will oppose the change. How does how does this current as drawn oppose that change? Well, use your uh, first right hand rule. Thumb goes with the current, fingers wrap with the field, and you're, you find that your fingers are wrapping through the loop, right? If your thumb, you just send your right, the thumb of the right hand with this black current I, your fingers will wrap inward into the screen through the loop. Now, how does that oppose the change? Well, the change that is occurring is a loss of inward flux. To oppose a loss, you add, right? To oppose, negative sign, loss, negative sign, two negative signs give you a positive sign. To oppose the loss of inward flux, you have to, the induced current will be generated such that it will oppose that loss by generating an inward flux, okay, to oppose the loss. So uh, that is how we use Lenz's law. Uh, let's look at another example, right? Just you gotta learn it by examples, get familiar with it. So we have uh, this sort of uh, coil that the plane of which is perpendicular to the magnetic field, so maximum flux, okay? you turn it in the way that is shown so that the left hand side of this loop here zoom in the left hand side of the loop is coming out of the screen right hand side of the loop is going into the screen um, what's going to happen to that flux well it's maximum now and it's going to go to zero right the plane of the loop once it reaches the the plane of the loop it becomes parallel with the magnetic field the flux will be zero okay so we're losing inward flux. Now, how do we oppose the loss of inward flux? We generate a current such that that current will produce inward flux to oppose the loss of inward flux. Okay, so here are my steps. Um, the book talks about uh, these steps here. Um, that's fine if you want to use them. My steps are a lot simpler. It's very simple. Okay, Simple to remember, simple to use. Okay, um, so first thing you ask is what is the external flux doing? Okay, in those both of those situations it was inward. Okay, next question, how is that flux changing? The inward flux could be increasing, it could be decreasing, you don't know. So unless you ask that question, just say the first part is not enough. It's a good start. So the first question, what's the external flux through that loop? Second question, how is that flux changing? Third question, how do I oppose that change? If I'm losing, if this, if this uh, delta B, um, and in fact, 
So, <laughs> technically, right, a little bit of a typo here. Okay, this should be, um, what is the external magnetic flux? Okay. Um, and then these are external. Okay, so uh, magnetic field is not the same thing as flux, so it should have been a flux. <laughs> uh, okay, so what's the external flux doing? Um, how is that flux changing? So the flux could be inward, could be outward. If it's inward, it could be increasing. If it's inward, it could be decreasing. Okay. How do you oppose that change? So three things here. Oppose the change in flux. That's where it gets complicated. You got to oppose a change in the existing external flux. Okay. So steps one and two just build you to step three. And then finally, step four, what induced current will generate the and it what will generate a flux that opposes the change in external flux okay so uh, this is the last question what induced current will oppose the change in external flux okay um, so those four steps are a much easier, simpler version of uh, these four steps. Okay, but if you want to remember these four steps, go right ahead. Um, okay, so let's look at some more practice. Zoom in. So, if we've got this loop, uh, we're pulling it out of the region in which there's outward um, external flux okay so first question what's the external flux it's clearly outward right second question how is that external flux changing well as we pull the loop out that external flux is decreasing right okay third question how do we oppose a decrease as we're pulling the loop out of that magnetic field region how do we oppose a decrease in outward flux well we add more outward flux Okay, so that's that last one. The decrease, how do, how do we oppose the decrease in external flux? We add more outward flux. Final question, what current will lead to the opposing of the decrease of external flux? Well, okay, if we want to add more external flux, you have to send the current, you have to induce a current in the counterclockwise direction to add outward flux to oppose the loss of outward flux, okay? How about this? So you got this, this sort of stretchy conductive loop. Uh, you let it constrict. The area is decreasing and the flux is decreasing. So the first question is, what is the flux? It's inward. Second question, how is that flux changing? The inward flux is decreasing. Third question, how do I oppose a loss of inward flux? I add more inward flux, okay? Fourth question, what current will add more inward flux? A clockwise current, right? The thumb of the right hand goes with uh, the clockwise direction. Your fingers will wrap into uh, the, the loop, adding inward flux that opposes the loss of outward flux, okay? Uh, here's another practice. So a south pole of the magnet moves towards the loop from below. Now, if we remember our magnetic field diagrams, magnetic field goes towards the south end of the magnet, in through the magnet, and then out around the north end. So, uh, if we're moving the south end towards the plane of the loop, then the inward flux is increasing as we move that magnet towards the loop. Okay, so that's, uh, the flux is inward. Okay, inward. It is increasing, second question, what's that flux doing? It's increasing. Third question, how do I oppose an increase of inward flux? I produce outward flux, okay? That's how I oppose it, that's the third question. Number four, what current will generate an opposing, uh, a flux that opposes 
the uh, the increase in inward flux, right? What what current will generate the outward flux? Um, in this case, a counterclockwise current. Again, thumb goes around counterclockwise, fingers wrap out through the loop to generate a flux that opposes the change in external flux that generated it. Okay, in this case, uh, the magnetic field generated by this magnet, again, the lines are like parallel um, to the magnet. Uh, if you move that magnet towards the loop where the plane of the loop is in the plane of the magnet, then there is no flux from the magnet because those field lines bend away, not in through the magnet or in through the loop. So uh, no matter what I do with this magnet, move it, as long as I move it in the plane of the page or the screen, which is the same plane as the, the loop, there is no flux and therefore there's no change in flux. Not therefore, there's no flux and there's also no change in flux because it goes from zero to zero. Okay. All right, so uh, this, um, this situation, you've got flux from right to left. As you're pulling the left part of the loop out and pushing the right part of the loop in, uh, you are going, that, that flux will be from right to left through the loop, and it will be increasing. So first question, what's the flux going to be from right to left through the loop? Second question, uh, what's the change? It's going to be increasing. Third question, how do I oppose that change? Well, to oppose an increase in right to left flux, you generate left to right flux, okay? Fourth question, how do I generate left to right flux? Well, right hand rule, if I send the thumb of my right hand in the counterclockwise direction, my fingers will wrap, as this loop turns in the direction shown, my fingers will wrap from left to right. They'll go through the loop from left to right, okay? All right, um, go back to the lecture here. So uh, get familiar with those examples. There's plenty of examples in the homework. Uh, get familiar with those as well. Uh, this is an extremely important conceptual step. We're going to end up uh, by understanding how a generator works. Um, and so you can't understand how the generator works. You can't explain it until you uh, describe um, these steps with Lenz's law. Okay, uh, so let's... I'm going to look through, so I'm going to stop with this. Um, I'm going to finish chapter uh, section 29.3, uh, but we're going to do this conceptually. So conceptually, um, we take this loop and we pull it out of the magnetic field region. What happens? Well, Lenz's law says a current is induced uh, in such a direction that it will oppose the change in flux that produced it or induced it. Okay, well, we're losing inward flux, so we need a clockwise current to be induced to oppose that loss. But wait a second, if current flows up the left hand side of this loop, okay, we have another law, force equals ILB, right hand rule. Right fingers go with the flow, bend with the field, thumb shows you the force. Uh, that induced current will experience a force due to I, force equals ILB. So as you grab this loop and try to pull it out of the magnetic field, you will experience a resistance it's called magnetic viscosity. Okay, It will resist you. You try to pull, resist. Now, uh, this is probably where, I, where you should, uh, if you haven't already, Watch the Lenz's Law videos, uh, the demonstration videos. Um, those are really fascinating. Okay, uh, magnetic breaking and those that sort of thing. Uh, it shows you that that the currents will always in oppose the change, and by doing, they essentially generate a sort of magnetic viscosity, magnetic resistance to motion. Okay. Uh, you could use that both to break and to drive, right? That um, magnet drive video is really interesting because it uses the same effect to both uh, repel and to attract, okay? Because you're opposing the relative motion either way. Um, okay, so here's a, a kind of good start at another application. Turns out we can, um, if we have this sort of conducting rail and we have a bar, and we push the bar, we give that bar velocity to the right, what's going to happen? 
Well, um, the area in this case is changing. The, D, the area is changing by bit dA in a certain amount of time dt because this length is the velocity of the bar times that time. Okay, so you can calculate the change in flux by saying, okay, the change in flux is just magnetic field times the change in area. What's the change in area? Well, it's L times V dt. If you're dividing by time in the first place, then that dt cancels and you just get this equation. Okay, um, I don't know why they stick, stuck this other uh, slide in there, but it's, it's related. If you just, if you take the conducting rail out and you just have the bar, well, the bar will generate an, an EMF, right? Potential difference across its ends. Why? Because conduction electrons that can move are moving, and so you have force equals QVB, right? Left hand, because it's negative charges. Fingers go with the flow, bend with the field. Thumb shows you the force. Those negative charges that are moving along through space, right, in, these, in this direction, uh, will experience an upward force. The, the bar starts off neutral, so if the top acquires a negative charge, the bottom acquires a positive charge, um, and that will persist until electrostatic equilibrium is achieved. Okay, so it's a real thing, right? Because um, aircraft are made of aluminum, aluminum body frame, fuselage. The, uh, there is an EMF generated between wingtip to wingtip for this reason because when air, air, uh, aircraft travel through the atmosphere, they're traveling through this magnetic field. So there's moving charges on there, the body of the plane through a magnetic field. They experience a the force. Uh, the EMF is generated. And of course, we have to take that into account because it could easily uh, short out the plane circuitry um, if we didn't put in electrostatic dampening mechanisms or just you know additional resistances. Uh, another example or application is uh, blood flow meters. So our blood has ions in it, right? Our blood uses ions to transport things. Um, and so if you have charges moving through our blood flow, you can just apply a magnetic field, again, force equals QVB. That's that effect that we just talked about will separate the ions, positive and negative, and generate a potential difference. If you just put a little uh, voltmeter across the right, the piece of the body that you're trying to measure blood flow through, um, that voltmeter can pick up the potential difference that's been generated and convert that to a reading of the velocity of those ions and therefore uh, give you a reading for the blood flow. All right, um, so uh, back to this. If you want to keep this, this rod moving since you have this current, right? So first of all, I'll, in this picture, right, we haven't really, so we, we've, we've talked about the change in flux is an increase in outward flux, which it generates a, a um, clockwise current that, that would produce an inward flux that opposes the increase in outward flux, okay? Now, that clockwise current uh, runs along the bar itself, right? It goes from top to bottom. And we can use force equals ILB, right? Current goes down, fingers come out, force is pointing to the left. So, bottom line here is that you don't get this electrical generation for free. As you take this bar and try to move it at speed V, there will be a resistive force, a magnetic resistive force, uh, generated by the very current that is induced by changing the flux as you uh, expand the loop, okay? So uh, you may not remember this, but power is force times velocity. So if you have that force, you just multiply it by velocity. Um, the force is just ILB. The current itself uh, is given by the EMF, induced EMF divided by the resistance, okay? Uh, did we get resistance for one of these things? Well, you, you, knew, you do need to be given a resistance because, you know, to calculate the current, current is induced EMF divided by resistance. Okay, so uh, work through, look through, read through, and listen through all these examples. They're very important conceptual examples uh, in app applying Lenz's law because the direction of the induced current, it's very important that current is induced, but the direction of the induced current is what allows us to 
um, to f figure out, for example, that the effect of ma magnetic viscosity uh, is present. Magnetic braking, which again, like I said, can also be used as a magnetic drive mechanism. All right, folks, we'll pick it up with um, with generators.